Now we're on to the easy part. All we need to do is copy the IP address we grabbed from DigitalOcean, paste it into a browser. I'm gonna use an incognito window for this. And we're gonna set the administrator account. So it's very important you do this right away because you don't want anybody to hijack your PBX or your asterisk server. So we have, I'm just gonna type in just some basic information. I'm gonna use the same password I've been using. I'm gonna use the address I use for all these, email address I mean. System identifier, this doesn't matter. You can name the server whatever you want, it's just a label. Check for updates whenever you want to check for updates and then set up system. And you'll have these options here. You want to go to free PBX administration and log in with the credentials you just signed up or you just set up. Choose your language and just continue right along. Okay, so there's two vulnerable security threats that they, re they recommend updating right away. I'm going to resize this window so we have the menus at the top. What is going on? Why do I? Oh, here we go. That shouldn't have taken that long. Okay, I just wanted to see those menu items at the top there. And to resolve this security issue, we go into admin, updates, go to module updates, click on check online so it'll actually check and do a query about what's available and what did it want us to do oh let me go back to dashboard i think it's voicemail and something else core okay core and voicemail let's go back module update to check online okay core where's the core there it is oh it's really highlighted in order to make it nice and easy just toggle it to download and upgrade and we're going to go find the voicemail okay and then just process this after you toggle them to the upgrade and download or download and upgrade options and the update section is also where you're going to download all the modules for all the features you want on this phone system. But you're gonna, you, it's very easy. You can just go through and read every single module and what the module does and make a choice about whether you want to use those features or not. The only thing I'm going to go through right now is setting up extensions because extensions are easy. And then we're going to go and set up um, DIDs, which are direct inward dial phone numbers. And that'll allow you to have public um, access to the public telephone network. Otherwise, you can just leave extensions and uh, assign your friends and family to extension numbers and give them you know, credentials for the uh, SIP phone extensions. After that's done and successfully, you can return. We can go back to the dashboard and you'll see that that should be resolved. Those warnings right there. Okay, so those were the security warnings. Now we can just go into applications extensions and we're going to do a new PJ SIP extension. And we're going to just use, um, in the past I've configured a couple test extensions 401 and 404. So this user extension is going to be 401. Display name is going to be uh, test x401. And then we're going to grab a password. It's a lot easier than the password it provided or recommends. I'm going to paste in that password. It's a weak password, fine. And then we're going to create a new New. We can just click on add PJ SIP and we're going to do the 404 extension. Uh, the display name I don't think matters. Okay, there we go. So we have a 404 and a 401, which match my existing test extensions. Let me go into my mobile phone. Let me see. To change the IP address. And let me do that real quick so we can test and make sure that the extensions are working. And in this case, my um, server IP address is 19, or sorry, 147.182.239.151. Okay, let's make sure there's no firewall. There's no firewall. Great. I must have typed something wrong because it's not connecting. It should connect right away. So let's try this again. 239.151. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? It's a good thing I had this little problem because what I forgot to do is basically apply the configuration because every time you make a change, you need to click this nice glowing red button that I somehow forgot to click. And once I click on that, all the changes that I made to the system will be applied to the system. And so now my phone registered. So let me go into the phone that I can share the screen with you. We're just going to do a screen mirror on my iPhone here. So now we can configure the SIP phone. I can show you how to configure the SIP phone here. We're going to change the IP address. Oop, that's the wrong account. We'll go into this account and we're going to type in the IP address of the server, which is 147. Dot, uh, what is it? 182.239.151. Click done, enable, and it's registered right away. So now I'm going to show you that I can call one extension to the other. So I'll grab the other phone. It's the 401 extension. Dial 404 and we'll answer this call and we should be able to hear the call, test call right here on the test extensions. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is configure the inbound and outbound routes and the trunk extension so we can actually call in and out on the public telephone network with a 10-digit phone number if you're in the U.S. If you're not in the U.S., you have probably more than 10 digits too, and a different type of different range of service providers as well. So we're going to configure it with a U.S.-based service provider for U.S.-based phone calls.